Wow, stories and memories about school. Where to begin? Uh, the last day of school, some of the people from my year group put a big banner in front of the school saying for sale. <laughs> Lots of memories of school, all of them good actually. I went into teaching, I think probably because the teaching here was so great and I have such good memories of being a secondary school. But I have, all my memories are slightly cheeky. Um, I, I loved coming to school socially, it was fun. <laughs> um, but I remember really hating my PE classes. <laughs> I represented South Island um, in eight sports. Um, in, and then plus two, including the sedan chair, as well as the pedal cart teams. Some of my fondest memories are from playing on the basketball team at SIS. So I think I first two years, I didn't actually make the team, but I still went to practice. And I finally made it C grade, B grade, and A grade. Going rowing at Middle Island and doing the Jupiter Red Edinburgh Award with Sue Cowland. Drama was really, really fun. I used to do a lot of uh, performances for assembly and dances and... Oh, go on. Shit! <laughs> yeah, so I used to do the Indian Cultural Evening here, which was really big, and that was like a lot of fun because it was just so much... I mean, like, this was obviously before, like, Slumdog Millionaire Fever, but it was still very much, like, people loved it. People, even if they weren't Indian, loved dancing, loved all the costumes and loved all that. Formed some really, really great friendships. My best friendships formed back when I was at SIS. All my closest friends now are SIS friends. When I first started, we were at Sook and Poo, uh, school as well, so, you know, very different uh, compared to this, and, and the facilities have changed and modernised, and it's just amazing to see what they have here today. Um, it was uh, multicultural. That was most interesting, I think. Being um, Chinese in this school, it, it just, you just didn't feel either Chinese, Western, Indian, Asian, wherever you came from, there was just one student body and everybody felt very much at home and very much part of a family. Being one of maybe five or six Indians in my entire year, but all my best friends were from all over the world. And growing up like that was, it's unlike anywhere else. So it doesn't really happen that often. I remember, there is one thing that I do remember, and I still remember the teacher's name, Mr. Krishnasamy. I was always labeled really bad with math. He inspired me and didn't make me feel like an absolute, you know, twit, basically. And I aced all his math classes after he taught me. So you get all this, um, you're ingrained thinking that you're no good at something, but it has so much to do with the teachers. Because when that one teacher inspired me, the fact that I could just like fly through my grades. I, I really dreaded being terrible. I was just terrible and I was, I was not very athletic. But coming back to Miss Dendle, who I feared and just loathed at the time, we ended up having inter-school um, competitions and she forced me to be a part of the team. The heat started, jumped in, didn't know how to dive, <laughs> belly flopped, and everyone was maybe two laps ahead of me. And I remember I was coming back and everyone had finished the race and she was alongside on the pool going, Evelyn, I'm so proud of you, keep going, finish, finish, finish. You have to finish what you've started, and it's the effort you put in. And now I live in Brunei, and I'm head of special needs in my school. So I graduated um, here, and then I went on to do law. So I went and I did that, but I really just didn't enjoy it. Like when I started doing my law internships, I didn't like working as a lawyer. So I came back, and I wanted something more people-focused. I have an exotic leather handbag line. Um, it's basically all my skins are imported from Italy and everything's handmade in Hong Kong. I sell online. 94, I think, I did my certificate in teaching English as a foreign language and worked at the British Council here for about seven or eight years. And from that, I then went and did my PhD in secondary English. And I returned to England to do that. And I've stayed in the UK and I teach at uh, state secondary in England. I've always worked in interior design since graduation, and I worked with a few large companies in hotel designs. I started out, and then I was doing a lot of marketing and development for design firms. I, I didn't suit corporate structure as I thought I did because it was a it was really stressful. The hours were crazy, but for a per personal reward, I wanted to do projects that I really liked. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to take the plunge, open my own company. Now I've had 
my company for coming up to 14 years. I'm the founder of a coach base. Uh, we do a mobile application for coaching, we digitize all the plays. I love my job because it's an intersection of my two favorite things, sports and IT put together. And graduated with a bachelor's in food science. And uh, since then I've worked in a number of companies using food science and um, <coughs> basically staying in quality. And I'm now a quality manager for quality and food safety at um, Nestle in Switzerland. Take advice <laughs> from the teachers. Usually the teachers have gone through what you're going through. Um, I would say never give up. Um, sometimes the things that you hate most in life uh, turns out to, think, to, to be your biggest lesson or, or something that you've, you've uh, you inspires you and motivates you, makes you stronger. It's okay to fail. I would say use all your contacts and connections. What's the worst thing they can say? If they say no, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, just if you really want to do something, knock on every door, make every phone call, um, start small. You know, it's not all about the money. It's not. It's got to be also about what makes you happy. Have some fun. Um, don't take it too seriously. Obviously, it's not that difficult. I look back and I look back at like college and it really wasn't hard. You know, I don't think anything in life is just genuinely hard. It might be difficult in terms of logistically, you might have a lot of work, but nothing is ever really so difficult you can't do it. So just always take a step back and look at what you're doing. Everyone's been in college before you. There are going to be millions of kids after you. It's college, but have some fun with that time. Some people might say this wrong, but I, I really think that you should follow your heart. Uh, somehow, you already kind of know what you want to do. Uh, I just follow my passion, and then I never thought I could intersect sports and IT together. What do you know? I, I'm doing what I love. Put your head down, really do work. Honestly, it is it's the best thing you can do. Have fun, obviously, and really do stay in touch with people. Um, when you go overseas, there are going to be, um, or even going to university in Hong Kong, there are going to be cultural differences, um, which you will need to adapt to. So study hard, um, play hard, study hard. I'd say never limit yourself. And don't think that it's that important to know what you want straight away. I think people get a lot, especially kids, they get a lot of pressure thinking I've got to pick the right path. But the reality is uh, people have two or three careers in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I've known doctors, I've known bankers who suddenly become photographers and they did it for the first part of their life. But I think it's really important just to assess what it is that you have a passion for because whatever you really love and put your heart into, the money will come. <laughs>